Welcome to another episode of the CPG Guys podcast. Our co-hosts, Sri Rajagopalan and Peter V.S. Bond, explore how brands and retailers engage with consumers online, in-store, and everywhere in between. And now, here are Sri and Peter. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the CPG Guys podcast. I'm PVSB, one of the aforementioned CPG Guys, and the stuff I love is retail, customer data, insight, CRM, and everything about loyalty. And then I got this other CPG guy. He's my co-host. He is an empresario when it comes to things like direct-to-consumer, unified commerce, retail media. Oh, that's going to be a good one today. And marketplaces. Please join me in welcoming the man known by one name, Shri. Shri, how you doing today? Thank you, Peter. And yes, favorite topic, retail media. Can't wait to get started. It's a good one today. And before we before we talk about that, I want to remind our audience that all of our content, our series on profitability, our women's leadership series, which Sri, I think you know, helped us contribute over, a, a, it was exactly $8,000 to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. That was a really great, worthwhile event. You can go back and check it out. It was the month of October. There were eight episodes associated with that. Uh, and of course, our ongoing founder series in Q1 of uh, 2021, all of that can be found by just going to cpgguys.com. Uh, and right now, we've also got our friend Britton Loud, who is on Instagram answering questions that we pose to him every day. It's going on live right now. Go over there and listen to them. There are some really provocative questions that he answers and gives us some some really great insights. Uh, And finally, we want to remind you that our content on this podcast is audience driven. So in order for you to tell us what you're looking for, can you go to ratethispodcast.com slash CPG guys, click onto the Apple podcast platform, give us a rating and leave us a review and tell us what you're looking for, because that helps inform the first thing we did from customer feedback or audience feedback was actually creating the profitability series that that was back in last year. So really great information. Just go to ratethispodcast.com slash CPG guys and and let us know what you think. Peter, I have a question before we start with our guest. Yeah, sure. What was that you said in another episode about the five-star Cadbury bar and how five-star ratings are good and like five stars feels good? We like five stars are great. If you're you're inclined to give us a five-star rating, that's great. We don't suppress ratings. That's fine. But we really like, we hope we're doing something that is going to entice you or motivate you to want to hit that five star. And if we're not, you got to tell us what it is and we'll, we'll work to address that in, in future episodes. But Shri, you're right on the money. So our guest today comes from a very important organization, particularly for people that are in the shopper marketing space. The Path to Purchase Institute, which is part of a company called Ensemble IQ, produces an enormous, a voluminous amount of content and research centered around shopper marketing. They also run a number of conferences like the Path to Purchase Expo, though obviously those kind of events have become very virtual for obvious reasons in our current pandemic life. Uh, Last month, the Institute released a survey of some of its audience about the value uh, that shopper marketing professionals see in seven major, ready for this, three retail media platforms. Wow. So to talk about this survey in particular, we have invited on to join us today, the associate editor from Path to Purchase Institute, who fielded the survey and wrote about the results. Uh, so let's introduce Cindy Lozo. Cindy, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. That is great. And before we get to the question, Cindy, our audience oftentimes likes to multitask. So they like to open up their phone as they're listening and browse the web. Can you tell our audience uh, first of, first what the URL is for the Institute? And then can you tell us a little bit about the Institute? Sure, so definitely log on to p2pi.org. Um, and yeah, the, the Path to Purchase Institute is a global member community serving the needs of brand manufacturers, retailers, agencies, and solution providers. Uh, As institute editors, we cover the marketing and merchandising efforts of more than 25 retailers. 
I personally cover and keep tabs on about a dozen retailers, including Kroger, Target, Home Depot, Aldi, and Dollar General, to name a few. I write and produce content for these retailers for the Institute's website, again, p2pi.org, as well as Path to Purchase IQ Magazine, which was formerly known as Shopper, Mag Shopper Marketing Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, I've been at the company for over seven years, Good. And though I've worked at other companies as a writer and editor, the Institute was my first real introduction into the world of shopper marketing. Um, actually, I used to joke with my old boss, Phil Schober, that, that this job has ruined me uh, because, and maybe you guys can relate, um, I can't go into a store or get served an ad online anymore without looking at things differently and yeah. seeing a story potential. Um, as editors, we routinely walk the stores and home retailer websites looking for interesting and noteworthy activations. So my husband refuses to shop with me anymore. I just take the long, um, but that's a bit about what I do. It's definitely an interesting time to write about shopper marketing and cover these retailers. And we're definitely keeping busy at the Institute. You know, Cindy, I was afraid there for a moment you were going to say that the company ruined you because uh, you're, you used to work with Steve Frenda. Steve, <laughs> just kidding. Shree and I love you. We have to have you on the podcast soon. We want to, we follow you on Instagram and all the photos that you're taking around the country in your retirement, but uh, we love you here. But anyhow, we always like to have fun here, Cindy. You know, <laughs> before you, before you, we get into the Q&A mode here of this episode, one of the things I wanted to point out what you just said, Cindy and this is very important, especially for those starting their career in CPG as well as retail, uh, which is you mentioned walking along on st into stores and taking pictures and getting to understand the shelf, displays, things of that nature. Peter and I have always believed one of the best way, ways to grow and get education in the CPG industry is do some in-store gondola walkthroughs, some display walkthroughs, lobby display walkthroughs, Department 82, where appropriate, uh, which is impulse, get to understand what's going on in the stores and the neighborhood around you. You may be a digital expert. You may be an e-com expert. Your journey in the CPG industry is vastly incomplete until you understand the in-store business model. Yes. I'm record we're recording this on a Friday, and I can tell you that Saturday is my, my one day to go out and do physical grocery shopping. I get up at five. I drive over an hour down to Westchester County and I go to the Wegmans store. And I love doing it for a couple of reasons. One, because there's nobody else around, but also because I can, to Shree's point, I can walk the store without interruption and I can yeah. explore and learn just while I'm picking up my groceries. And that is, uh, that is something that is an affliction of anybody who, like Cindy has mentioned, has been in this industry and particularly been involved with the Institute. So, hey, Cindy, so let's, Let's talk about this survey that you fielded because uh, I was absolutely uh, fascinated by it. Very simply, why did you decide to conduct this survey on, on retail media platforms? Yeah, so each year and really for the past 25 years, uh, we've produced our trends report for our magazine to examine and dive into the major issues affecting consumer goods companies. Uh, here's actually a cover of the trends report this year. And we actually, I had the cover of this year, uh, next year, last year's trends report. Um, so to create the reports- um, I just our, wanted to point out those who are watching the video, you'll actually be able to see the cover. Yeah. But what we'll do is post the uh, post. Um, we'll we'll include a link. We'll include, we'll include a link to the to the trends report uh, in the liner notes of the podcast. Great. So yeah. So uh, to create the report, um, our editorial team comes together to discuss the hot topics and trends in the industry, and then from there we draft a survey for brand marketers. Um, as you know, and as Shri will attest, uh, retail media was already a trend in the industry even before the pandemic. Um, yep. uh, this is actually the second year that we've asked brand marketers to rate a retailer's media platform across several metrics for the trends report. Um, also in terms of the survey, we've always polled um, brand marketers on how they feel retailers are performing in various areas of collaboration. So it was only natural for us to go in this direction again and ask them to evaluate how retailers were doing in terms of their media networks. Gotcha. So um, speaking of retail media, here's my favorite question of the day. 
How did you decide which media platforms, which retailers to include? Were there several on your list that at the end of the day you did not include? Like, how did you go about this and which retailers do you have coverage for in this survey? Right. So, um, uh, yeah, so right. Uh, the, so for the survey we did, we ended up with Walmart, Kroger, Albertsons, Dollar General, Target, Amazon. We had a couple more at out. Ajo Del Hayes, CVS, and Giant Eagle. Um, we, um, Cindy, do each of these have their own media agency and platforms? Yes, so definitely. Um, they all do. And uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, we cover a wide range of retailers. So, we wanted to include as many networks as we could. Um, there were some networks that we initially included, but there weren't enough people in the survey base working with them. So, we ultimately didn't include them in the report. Um, because, in order for someone to rate a network's performance, they had to have worked with them. Ah, very good. I would say this um, for because this this is something that Sheree and I are fascinated about. We're more than happy to to work with you for next year when you do this again to help okay. uh, identify people to participate in the survey because we think this is really really valuable. Oh great! But to that end, we'd love to know how you actually fielded the audience uh, to to participate in the survey. Was it from Path to Purchase Institute members? What was your primary mechanism for finding survey participants? Yeah, so exactly, you're exactly right. Uh, we reached out to the brand marketers in our database. So our members, subscribers, and all the executives from brand marketing organizations within our community. And as you mentioned, as I just mentioned, only brand marketers that worked with the networks could rate them. So for example, the online survey would ask if you worked with Kroger Precision Marketing, and if you did, you could rate the platform across seven key metrics. But if you didn't, you just move on to the next, plat uh, next platform or survey question. Did, uh, let me follow up on that before I pass it to Shree. Did you give any consideration to having um, agency participants in the survey? Because increasingly, Shree and I are hearing that sometimes that, that control is being outsourced to agencies to actually manage. Yeah, um, we... I guess we can always look at it, but we've always historically just gone to brand marketers. But I mean, that's something I can talk to our editorial team or we're always thinking about, because um, that's a good point. Shri? So, so let's move to the world of <clears throat> what was actually measured. Mm -hmm. How did you decide on what to measure and how did you go about the process of working with retailers within the this new agency retail world of actually making sure that what you measured was meaningful for brands at the end of the day? Right, so um, great question. Uh, respondents, um, we asked respondents to rate the retail media platforms on their relative strengths in targeting effectiveness, measurement capabilities, ROI, uh, data sharing, sales growth, creative freedom, and traffic driving capabilities. We use these same key metrics in our report last year, but added traffic driving capabilities this year. Um, we decided on these attributes specifically based on our understanding of what elements of these sites are most important to the brands who are using them and the elements that we understand best make up an effective, efficient campaign for brands. Outstanding. Okay, so now we know how you made the sausage. Let's 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 taste the wares. I, I wanted to point one other thing out, Peter. So so if I were to look through the actual report and the analysis, it's really brands who have shaped the outcomes, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, that, that that's these are from brand marketers. Yeah, all the uh, right. responses. All right, so let's get to the actual outcomes from the survey. What, uh, from your perspective, were the key highlights? Was there a particular one or two that really you think stood out? And um, it, particularly in terms of who was who has decidedly had the highest value to your to your respondents, and um, which retailers probably have some room for improvement? Right. So um, first off, and I've alluded to this earlier. Um, the way we've done the retail media evaluations is we ask survey takers that have worked with the platform to rate them individually across these seven key performance metrics. 
So for example, we don't put Kroger Precision Marketing next to Amazon advertising and have survey takers pick their favorite or rank them for ROI or right. targeting effectiveness. Um, instead, we have uh, survey takers rate platforms individually based on these metrics. So if you work with Target's Roundel media platform, you can mark down if you think the platform's targeting effectiveness is excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor. Okay. And, and then eat, rate each other metric from there. So it's, that, not, it's not relative to another platform. It's just your subjective understanding of when, what you think it, uh, this retailer's platform delivers in terms of each of these attributes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that said, um, last year's results varied across capabilities, but Amazon, Kroger, and Target consistently earned better ratings than the competition, followed by Walmart. So this year, those platforms continue to do well, but Kroger Precision Marketing specifically led the way in many key performance metrics compared to other platforms. Um, so for example, 64% uh, of survey participants that worked with Kroger Precision Marketing gave the platform an excellent slash very good score for targeting effectiveness. And 57% gave the platform an excellent, very good score for measurement capabilities. And Amazon advertising fell a bit behind uh, KPM, Kroger Precision Marketing, on targeting effectiveness and measurement capabilities this year, but overall scored generally well, especially within the ROI category uh, compared to other platforms. And as I mentioned, Roundel and Walmart Media Group also generally earned, uh, did really well. Uh, they earned excellent, very good and good scores for targeting effectiveness and traffic driving capability specifically. Um, it's also worth noting that CVS Media Exchange is a relatively new network, but respondents gave the platform a good score for creative freedom and traffic uh, effectiveness. But as far as which retailers have room for improvement, um, I do think that all retail retailer platforms have room for improvement in some key areas. E even a third of marketers that worked with Kroger gave the platform a poor fair rating for ROI and creative freedom. And 39% of respondents that worked with Amazon advertising gave the platform a poor fair rating for data sharing. But uh, you know there are some platforms um, that need some more improvement than others in certain key metrics. Uh, 64% of survey takers that work with Albertsons Performance Media gave the platform a poor fair rating for ROI. But on the other hand, the same number gave the platform an excellent, very good or a good score for targeting effectiveness. Here's what I can tell you, um, as most of the audience know, I'm in the rating and review business. So, and Sri, I know agrees with me. This is feedback and I hope that all of the retailers take note of what this is and learn to dig in and, and self-examine and determine where there are opportunities because ultimately they're trying to deliver solutions to brands yeah. that help them connect better with the right shoppers and build baskets and, and generate transactions. And so these mechanisms Absolutely. are really about doing that. And so look, I have my my comment to anyone Absolutely. on this podcast, let's listen to this podcast that that's from a retailer. Take a look at these because they are they are important and they are your customers because they're buying the solution that you're selling in this platform. And you want to be customer responsive, just like when you're selling products to to shoppers, you are responsive to them. It's very much a customer first kind of proposition. Shree? So Cindy, you shared a lot of highlights of what you learned in the report. What I'm very curious about is understanding if there were any surprises that kind of stared at you in the face. A lot of what you kind of shared, I would have anticipated one way or another. Anything that stood out in your mind as, whoa, that's, that's odd, bizarre, or that's not what I expected. Yeah, everything was kind of in line with what we've been hearing, uh, but we didn't 
So we didn't necessarily see a lot of surprises in the retail media network evaluations, but we did see a significant increase in the amount of money that's coming out of national media budgets relative to shopper marketing budgets. So yeah. almost almost one fourth or 24% of respondents said network buys are being funded by national media budgets, which is up from 18.2% percent last year. And on the other hand, we asked survey takers um, their opinion on retail media networks, and almost one in four of them said that the networks are more a money grab for the retailer than an effective tool. So there mm -hmm. is still some skepticism, you know, out there. Um, another thing to note, uh, which was a bit surprising, is that the retailers that are leading the way right now in terms of their media networks yeah. are the ones who are leading the way in a lot of other areas too. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned earlier, we've always polled brand marketers and how they feel retailers are performing in various areas of collaboration for the survey. Uh, this year, we found that Target and Kroger, for example, were the retailers most often identified as best collaborative partners during the pandemic. And multiple respondents recognized 8451, which is Kroger's uh, data analytics subsidiary, for being responsive and forthcoming with information about the pandemic's impact on stores. And Target received several kudos on its fulfillment options and its efforts to deliver benefits for itself, brand partners, and shoppers alike. Um, in the survey, we also asked brand marketers to rate retailers on their ability to share actionable shopper data to drive more effective marketing. Yeah. And Kroger rose to the top with 92% of respondents rating the retailer as excellent or good. Yeah, for those on the audience um, who are interested, and we've talked about this in the past, 8451 is their data science group. I used to work in the previous incarnation called Dunhumby USA when Dunhumby had a joint venture with Kroger, but they have very rich data, north of 95% of all transactions uh, sold going through Kroger, omni-channel, uh, are identifiable at the household level, which means you have really rich data and they have well over um, 15 years of experience with this big data asset. So I'm not surprised that they've they've built a solution that's that is highly uh, desirable and, and usable by the brand audience. Um, so this is really great. Is it your thought? I, you made mention of the fact that you had done this as part of the trends analysis the previous year. Is your intention to continue doing this into the future uh, and build longitudinal data points? And are there some other platforms that are you'd love to be able to include next year as well if you are going to do this? Yeah, so as I said earlier, the trends report is based on everything we're seeing in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So if retail media continues to be a strong trend, then we will certainly be asking questions about it in our next survey. And the way things are going, all signs point to this continuing to be a very strong trend for years to come. You know, I think Shri and I could probably think about from our, our perspective, being able to include platforms now like the growing Instacart, the Instacart platform, maybe even mm -hmm. Drizzly. Um, there are a lot more that are emerging that can be really interesting. So we look forward to this because we'll, we gobble it up. I, I was so absolutely uh, fascinated by the results. I, I could, I devoured the article very, very quickly. Um, Shri, thoughts? Yeah, thank you so much for sharing all that data about the survey and the outcomes. You know, I, I for one, didn't find a lot of surprises in the survey, but but I think the most important takeaway today before I ask you this next question is retail media is here to stay. Retailers have audience and reach and brands should be taking advantage of that, whether it comes from, you know, uh, below the line national media, above the line trade via shopper marketing, I think it's something for brands to resolve over the course of time, but there's no debate that um, there's reach and audience on individual retailers and you can even get localized given given the store and attributes of the store and things of that nature. So the, the last one I have for you for this episode, Cindy, is a simple one, which is tell us more about P2PI. Uh, what are the types of articles, white papers, etc. one can browse and find on the P2PI website? And uh, then tell us a little bit more uh, about if they want to learn more about this particular research, what's the best way for 
our audience to do that. Yeah, we have so much content on p2pi.org um, for, for our members. Um, we have videos from Expo. We have um, so many white papers. We have daily field reports where we track uh, kind of what we're seeing in stores from our store visits and things like that, or what we're seeing online from digital activation. So I definitely uh, encourage people to visit p2pi.org. If anybody wants to see in detail how all these media networks did in the trends report this year, I encourage you to check out the January, February edition of Path to Purchase IQ magazine. And if you don't have a copy, um, anyone right now can access this year's trends report on p2pi.org through the end of the month, after which it's only going to be available to members. So act quickly. So, so I'll let everyone know that we'll put a link to that uh, in the liner notes and go there very quickly. As you're listening to this, click on it and get your copy before it goes behind the paywall. Yeah. Um, but we also recommend all of our listeners, the Path to Purchase Institute is a phenomenal organization and you need to find a way to be involved through, uh, through that because I love the archives of articles, the in-market photos, the the uh, white papers and even the who's who guides. Uh, you may have seen on the on the CPG guys LinkedIn page in December, we were featuring some of our friends who were recognized in in last year's who's who in e-commerce uh, issue, and and it's it's such a tremendous resource. Absolutely, Shri. So I had a quick question, Cindy, just as a follow up. Is most of the content only accessible when you're a member or is there content for anybody who wants to research and get some learnings? Yeah, so I definitely, there are some, you know, uh, content that's available to non-members and also some of our field reports are published on path to purchase iq.com. So you can, you know, definitely check that as, out as well. Um, yeah, and also, and and one thing I want to highlight too is that we've been doing a lot of webinars. Um, we actually have an upcoming webinar. I'll be hosting um, re, a retail intel webinar on Kroger on March 16th with our content partner, Great Northern, where I'll be diving into kind of giving a div, deeper dive on how Kroger Precision Marketing did in this year's trends report. Um, so that's free to anyone who wants to join. And we also have an upcoming retail media forum, which will be a virtual event on March 30th and 31st. And again, us Institute editors in August will come together for a special webinar on retail media networks specifically. Thank you. So to our audience, I want to remind them that all of our content, uh, audio podcasts, videos, documents, links to our profiles and everything else you can just go to cpgguys.com and of course give us your feedback through ratethispodcast.com slash cpgguys cindy thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us the information on a topic that just fascinates shri and me it is always top of mind we talk about this on the podcast our audience wants to hear about it um thanks so much we really appreciate it Thanks for having me. This is great. Thank yeah, you so great. much for coming on board. Shri, um, boy, did we quench your thirst with this? Wasn't this a yes, great sir. episode? Yes, sir. And I actually can't wait year over year to follow this and see uh, what new, great, interesting learnings we have as retail media matures and develops into a full media platform that can stand alone on its own. That is awesome. Well, Shri, thanks for joining me as always. And to our audience, we look forward to you joining us on the next episode of the CPG Guys podcast. Goodbye.